Ooh, religion. One of those topics that earned a top spot in the list of things you should avoid at all costs when in the company of most others, right next to politics and sex. It's a hot button, but today I'm aiming to talk about it in a way that perhaps will transcend the nitty-gritty and do as I like to do, which is look at it from a distance where the earth looks like a tasty little frosted blueberry. Welcome to Tea Time, my friends, a place where I muse about my gender transition experience and in the process aim to comfort and inspire others to a greater level of self-awareness. I am Artemis, enjoying an iced cup of peppermint brownie cake pop, courtesy of the Rosenvine Gift Company. And to dive right into the video, let's first define religion. So the dictionary says that religion is a belief in and a worship of superhuman controlling power, especially a personal god or gods, a cause, principle, or system of beliefs to which someone ascribes supreme importance and are held to with ardor and faith. So with that, it's easy to recognize Christianity, Islam, Judaism, etc. as religions. And however, at this point in human history, there is a new religion that has been brewing since the late 1800s in plain sight. But most people miss it entirely because it does not appear like we expect it to. And this blindness has a real human cost as significant as any caused by the recognized religions. A few quick words aside, throughout my videos, I try to be careful to avoid the traps of categorical thinking. That is to say, to reduce things to a box and therefore miss the bigger picture. And this video will be no different. This new religion that I speak of has a generally accepted label, but for the sake of drawing bigger connections for the message, I will avoid naming it for now. I'm going to do three things in this video. I'm going to assert that almost every human on this planet has a religion, explain why that is a crucially significant piece to understand, and warn of this new religion that melds philosophy and faith, and when in the hands of most humans, still ends in tragic results. Meanwhile, let's start with Friedrich Nietzsche's proclamation that God is dead. A philosopher of the late 1800s, he was writing this because at the time, science was really beginning to undermine the major religions. Humans had previously relied much on blind faith and worship for things they largely did not yet understand in order to bring them a sense of structure and peace. While we had philosophers like Aristotle, Plato, Confucius, Thomas Aquinas, Descartes, for hundreds of years prior to generate all kinds of novel ideas, they were not able to be substantiated with much proof, so religion remained intact. That changed when science began making some huge strides at the end of the 19th century and exploded by the time we reached the middle of the 20th century. We went from cavalry and bayonets on the battlefield to the atomic bomb, from mass disease to curative medicine, and horse and carriage to practically a rocket-fueled spaceship for locomotion. The changes were mind-blowing, to say the least. Something that would have had you burnt at the stake for proclamating just a few hundred years before. Okay, so what's my point? Now, instead of needing religion to assuage all of our fears over frontiers we had no hard understanding of, science began to give us the answers that previously religion had. And some of us got too big for our britches. While it's still true that the more we know, the more we realize we don't know, thank you Aristotle, there began to exist in larger numbers individuals who believed that through the power of their thought experiments bolstered by this new science that they could play God and therefore did not need any of the existing religions. Today, we call them the intellectual elites, individuals in certain higher academic circles who dangerously think that they have all the answers, who then influence the people who take the action, but themselves take no responsibility if they are wrong. Personally, I see these people like the shriveled, evil face of Voldemort on the back of Professor Quirrell's head from the Harry Potter series, a weak, sniveling bully needing a larger brute to do their dirty work. One such bully was Antonio Gramsci. 
an Italian philosopher at the height of his political and social contribution during this turn of the 20th century time. To be fair to him, and like many of the intellectual elites of his time, and you can argue even today, their goals could be considered noble to achieve what they called utopia, which is essentially heaven on earth, so that there would be no more suffering, everyone was to be made equal so that everyone could be happy, the assumption there being that everyone would want to be equal, and this isn't true, but I digress. I swear, though, I've said this before, and I'll say it many times in the coming videos. The motto for this camp of thought should be, the path to hell is paved with good intentions. Because while they were aiming for heaven, what they produced was hell. Gramsci himself said, and I quote, Socialism is precisely the religion that must overwhelm Christianity. And Mussolini wrote, Fascism is a religious conception that transcends the particular individual and raises him to a conscious membership in a spiritual society. The people who had been following this new religion were bolstered by Gramsci's words, and what followed in the 20th century after his death resulted in more human loss of life than any other cause known to man. I've heard unaffiliated people complain of religion that more people have been killed in the name of the major religions than any other cause, failing to recognize that the people who espouse socialism, Marxism, communism, and now wokeism believe that their ideology is a religion, as they state often, and seek to live by it with the same devotion as any of the traditional theologies. An ideology is just a system of ideas and ideals, especially one which forms the basis of economic or political theory and policy. So when you add it to the placing of extreme importance and holding to it with dogmatism, ardor, and faith, sounds kind of familiar, right? Now you have a religion. It's a classic case of my religion is better than your religion, just in a different flavor. So, by now, I've blown the lid off by giving this religion a label, or a few, Wokeanity, Wokelam, Wokeism, Postmodern Neo-Marxism, as it's being called in the academic circles, all jokes aside. We can draw further similarities to this new religion, which I often refer to as Wokeism, to the religions of old, as much as they might deny it. Robin D'Angelo's White Fragility is a text that is being lauded by wokeism like a chapter in the Bible, and within it she insists that all white people are inherently racist and must atone for their sin with whatever physical measures deemed appropriate by the offended race. From an evolutionary biology perspective, the lens through which I view everything, discrimination is something that we can never completely be rid of because it's programmed into our DNA. And I'm not talking about a hatred of people whose skin color is different than ours, but a discrimination in that we prefer members of our own related families, which sometimes includes skin color. We change our behavior when dealing with those of the opposite sex, and we prefer to work with others who think or act like us. If those discriminations can be twisted to be seen as racist, then we will never be rid of this racism and therefore we will always be made to atone and give reparations to the offended party, according to D'Angelo and those that think like her. This is no different than the majority of major world religions that say, you were born into sin, you will never be rid of it, but you must come to us for guidance in how to be saved. Except this time, the role of the Savior or God is being played by these very real, very flawed human beings that we call the intellectual elites. Another similarity of wokeism to the major world religions Many of their ideas were creations of philosophers who, instead of applying logic and reasoning as they were supposed to, trapped themselves with the old-school religious thinking pattern. They went on blind faith that their assertions would lead to utopia, with no solid evidence that it would be so. 
They worked on a type of logic called inductive reasoning, which in formal logic means that they cannot assert 100% that their conclusion will be true because it has never been proven before. They can only state all the things that it will not be. Basically, they would call it an educated guess. Even Herbert Marcuse, one of their prominent thinkers in the 1960s in his essay on liberation, ends with the sentiment that people must first be free, in the Marxian sense, free of a system, before they can even think about what utopia would look like. Because even they do not know what exactly they are aiming for in the realistic sense. And, much like religion, has an idea of heaven that nobody can define for sure, the woke have utopia, which in Latin literally means nowhere. Well, shit. It sounds like there is no such thing as a good religion, right? Maybe religion should be eliminated, and maybe atheists and agnostics have it right. I don't think so. While atheists and agnostics believe that there is no definitive proof of God and therefore cannot say if there is one, they still conduct their lives by a series of beliefs about what will happen when they die, and consequently, what is the purpose of their current lifetime. This is one conundrum which religion or spirituality still serves to answer humankind's questions about what to do with our lives. If you have no purpose or code of conduct as a higher conscious being, you find yourself in that musing posed by a more prominent recent philosopher, Albert Camus, who said, There is but one truly serious philosophical problem, and that is judging whether life is or is not worth living. Damn, that got dark fast. My point being that if you do not have a religion of sorts, whatever it looks like, that is somewhat like a computer without software to run it. It's almost useless. The vast majority of people also never get to learn who they are as people and instead see their identity only as it relates to causes that they champion or other people to whom they are in relation, making their religion all the more important to them because their entire sense of self and therefore their life depends on it. So, Have I yet convinced you that all humans need a religion of sorts? Or at the very least, that the majority of pe for the majority of people, it's a force fought for with the urgency of survival? If I have, there is still this lingering frustration that religion is a problem leading to mass casualties. But here is where it's a question of the frame being wrong, not the content. There is one common human behavioral denominator across all of these religions, and it's the dogmatic belief amongst its people to such an extent that they are willing to control others to align with their beliefs, often in some horrifying ways. As in, I am so convinced that I am right, and it is a matter of life and death, and if I do not convince you of this truth, then the choice is either you go or I go. And we all know how that often turns out. Those who hate religion often do so because of how humans have used it. It's not religion itself that we hate. One of the most profound realizations that you can make is that humans tend to need a savior, a leader of which they can follow and hang all of their troubles on to solve. This is one reason why religion today, despite many scientific breakthroughs, still holds such power. But the seat of power lies completely within you. Once you escape the need for your parents as an adult, most people don't realize that they just transfer their need of a higher authority onto their government or God because the burden of personal responsibility is just too great. Some people will never escape the need to worship or defer to something that solves their problems. Thus, religion works to keep them stable. This is why it tends to be, of course not always true, that religious people are against a lot of government control. They have already given their allegiance to God. Whereas those without religion give their allegiance to the government and sneer at the religious people without realizing that they are giving government the same reverence as God. Antonio Gramsci stated that socialism is the religion that should replace Christianity. 
If you, however, reach the point of realizing that you are the ultimate seat of leadership and furthermore do not corrupt this power by violating the sovereignty of others, you have broken free of the oppressed oppressor dynamic narrative that continues to play out time and again while people entrust their lives to others. Yuri Bezmenov, a Russian KGB agent, speaking on how to subvert and control a population with psychological warfare, once pointed out that a solid, stable religion was the only way to combat these tactics of which he spoke. While the old world religions may keep you from wokeanity, the only system of belief that will keep you from being victim at the hands of others is the religion of complete personal responsibility and peace with the unknown.